Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Valicia Shante, and today I have with me my husband. What's going on? It's uh, Taiwan, a lyrical monster, Taiwan TLM on YouTube. Check me out. <laughs> today we will be doing a podcast. Um, we'll probably do one say twice a month. Yeah, we'll try to get one in maybe twice a month with the schedule and everything. And if, if it picks up and gets more popular, maybe we'll do one more often. Just let us know in the comments below. So we don't have a name for our podcast yet because someone did not do his job and come up with the name. I'm just kidding. But today we're going to talk about guilty pleasures. Do you have any guilty pleasures? I do have a few, but I'm curious to kind of dig into a few others that we found online first. So that way we can be able to see if you guys indulge in it and then maybe if she has some or if I have some. So what do you think the first one? Like, what do you think would be the top common guilty pleasure? I would say probably something related to food. It is. It, it's um, ordering takeout because you can't be bothered to cook. <laughs> do we do that? We definitely do that. <laughs> um, I want to say, I mean, it's, it's different, Don't right? tell on us, Rico. Don't um, tell everybody. So being here in Japan is obviously a lot different because um, we kind of limited on some things you have here. I mean, obviously, you're in another country, so a lot of things that you want to enjoy, you want to eat, um, they don't necessarily have here. Um, they have some of the ingredients that you can make it yourself, but... They don't have everything. So, um, our takeout game is, is a little weak, so we end up re-eating a lot of the same things. What we, do we re-eat? <laughs> it's a lot of McDonald's in life. <laughs> uh, and before you say it in the comments, or you can let us know. I know McDonald's is not the best option, but it's just it's very quick and it easy is. to go to. Um, there are other places here, like we have a couple of Wendy's here. Um, it's a bit of a drive, you know, especially now. Uh, usually you probably wouldn't take the train. Yeah, the uh, train. To get out like to, an hour? Yeah, it's like an hour roughly, maybe a little bit over, uh, to get from here to Yokosuka to Yokohama. But now we have a little one, Ava. Uh, yeah, the train's not really an option. Newborn, I don't want people in the face coughing on her, staring at her, you know, it's just not ideal. So. I think here we have what McDonald's, Taco Bell. We have Burger King, Pizza, Domino's. Is we it? haven't been to KFC. We have not. We haven't tried Denny's. We have not. I heard Denny's is actually not that good. Well, it's it's not. I looked at the menu. It's not U.S. based like McDonald's and Burger King. It's more Japanese based. So okay. we have. It's very limited to what we're able to eat as far as fast food wise. I want to say, I'm actually really excited because um, they opened, I can't remember the name of the place, but it has like a little gator as its logo. I think it's Bayou or Bayou or whatever it is. Um, they just opened up this place on base and they finally started serving catfish. And for those of you that know me, know I love it's catfish. It's his favorite, it's favorite, favorite food. Um, it's kind of a bit, you know, obviously upsetting a little bit because when you use that southern style taste of catfish and you have something that just trying to remedy that and don't really come close at all because obviously, you know, you're not going to get the taste unless you have the same ingredients to cook it. So it's not. <sighs> yeah. But we went to Hard Rock Cafe and that was pretty good. Actually, we did. Um, Hard Rock Cafe is kind of pretty much traditional. Um, I don't remember if they had anything that was kind of stood out. They didn't. It was a, a U.S. based menu. The only thing is that that was, that was pretty far. Yeah, that one was also over an hour. Yokohama, so. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get a chance to go out and try some more other places. There's an A&W over here. I don't know if you got that. Uh, there's a Popeye's, but their menu is never up to date, unfortunately. There's Subway. Subway everywhere. Subway, I think, is the world's mm -hmm. number one. Number one fast food so chain. So they're everywhere. Um, it's a lot of seafood, lot, lots of sushi. Um, unfortunately, I don't indulge because I'm allergic to shellfish. So is she. So that's kind of out the way for that, but... A lot of other interesting things here. So what you got? What's next on the list? Falling asleep watching TV. Man. I don't fall asleep watching TV. No? <laughs> no matter a lot of you. So if it's late, and probably, I mean, I guess it good considers what you call late, but if it's like around 8.30 or so, and we put on maybe an hour and a half to two hour long movie, she may make it to the end, but maybe not. Stop telling stories. Though, she ain't making it. Stop telling stories. It's all true. Now, me, 
Um, you don't I, make it either. You put I won't a movie. He put a movie on last night, and you were asleep the thirty first thirty minutes in. By the time I woke up, That's true. you were like out. But that was my second movie. I actually rewatched uh, something that I seen recently, and I was actually really disappointing in it. Um, so I just kind of put something on to fall asleep to. And, you know, it's just background noise for me since it's the weekend. Um, but yeah, if it's if it's past like 10, 30, 11 o'clock and I put a movie on, yeah, I'm out. Probably sometimes before the opening scene is in. Like, I, I can't help it. Like, I'll look at him and I was like, oh, you should probably turn this off. You're going to go to sleep. And then what do you do? Go sleep. He's like, oh, I'm up. I'm up. And then I hear him snoring. Yeah. Um, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. Number three, sneaking an extra scoop of ice cream. Well, I would say that that would, would have been a guilty pleasure of mine back when I was a lot younger. Um, I, I love ice cream, but as I'm older, you know, being lactose intolerant, can't really indulge in as much ice cream as I would like to. I know there's alternatives, um, but a lot of them just aren't as enjoyable as the things I would love. For instance, cookies and cream by, um, was it Bluebell? I think it was. Bluebell. Um, loved it. Now can't have it so much because it's obviously not working out for me. So, but even besides ice cream, is there something that you eat that you sneak an extra piece of that you probably shouldn't have? Um, it used to be cake, chocolate cake to be exact. Love chocolate. You haven't had chocolate cake in forever. I know. So I go through phases where uh, sometimes it's like I'll really enjoy eating a whole cake, I can probably give me two or three and I'll devour a whole cake by a week. Um, but now, not so much. It's, as I got older, it's just sweets that's are really, really rich, even though I enjoy them, I can't have too much of it because mm -hmm. it's just, I don't know, it makes my makes my tooth hurt or it, it just makes me feel too hyper and it is a right. hard crash after the fact. So not really as so much. I really don't sneak extra pieces of anything now. I do. What mostly mostly sweets like fruit snacks or if it's ice cream i'll say oh i'm gonna eat like this much and then i end up eating like more than <laughs> what i said is that why you went to the little cups yeah the little cups are better because i don't feel so bad afterwards like dang i just ate this whole pint of ice cream portion control yes Gotta have I, portion I, control. I don't have it <laughs> um <laughs> okay buying yourself a treat i mean i guess it really depends on what that referring to um i mean i treat myself to different things but i don't know if that would be a guilty pleasure i guess if you do it all the, all the time like i don't this depend on like what kind of treat i guess so when I, mean, I treat myself to coffee in the morning is that a <laughs> is that a guilty pleasure i mean um i guess it could be it's i used to so just a little divot it back I used to work at UAMS, University of Arkansas Medical Science uh, in Nutrition Services, and I used to make a lot of coffee. I mean, a lot of coffee. And I hated it. I hated everything about it. And unfortunately, I was really, really good at what I did. So everyone would come down and order a lot of coffee. Um, and I just had just this, this negative stigma towards coffee for a while. And it wasn't until way after to like actually join the Navy um, I finally had a coffee. I think it was a Frappuccino, actually, from McDonald's, and I loved it. Uh, it's a lot of caffeine, so, you know, it kind of gets you super hyper, a lot of energy. But I'm really particular. Like, I can I can drink all, you know, types of coffee. It's just the same thing. Coffee usually comes with some sort of cream, um, so I'm really limited on my choices. It needs to... But you drink the coffee that's out there in that... Um... I do. Machine. So um, here in Japan, they have a Georgia coffee, which is actually made by Coca-Cola. Um, I don't know if we can get it back stateside, but I really enjoy that. And I'm pretty sure they use, I think, 2% milk for that. Um, so it's not that bad on me. I can usually have like a can of it, which is about eight ounces. Um, I guess that would be what I would actually sneak down to an extra scoop with an extra can of if I could. But I tried not to because the more I drink, obviously, you know, the dangers of consuming a lot of things as lactose doesn't really sit well so who are you i don't have anything oh okay well i take that back i was gonna tell a little lie since i <laughs> in the morning time me and ava 
we'll go across the street and sometimes I'll get coke. Yep. It's That's what it coke. is, coke. She was beating around the bush. It's coke. When I was pregnant, I could not drink anything with caffeine. Like, well, I had a grape soda. That one was okay, right? Yeah, but I don't think it was caffeinated. It probably wasn't. But Coke, like, that's my all-time favorite soda, and I could not have it. And so after I had Ava, did you buy me one or did I get one? I want to say it's when I bought the leader with the pizza from Domino's. Yeah, so, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I can drink Coke now. And so not every day, not every day, Okay, every maybe day. every day I have to have a Coke. And I, I have to do better because I didn't drink Coke like that. But now, the Coke here tastes different. Wouldn't you say so? Like, oh, when yeah. you open it up, it's like, it's really crisp. And I was telling my friend, I was like, if you drink this Coke here, it's going to take all your problems away. I promise just like, close your eyes, take a sip. And like, for a moment, you don't have any problem. At least that's what I think. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. So the Coke's here. You know, I was did a, a Google a while ago. A friend of mine at work was saying, hey, do you know who makes the best Coke in the world? And I thought it was just like some random corny joke that I usually get. And they were like, it's McDonald's. And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. He's like, no, I'm serious. Humor me. You should Google it. So I Googled it, and apparently McDonald's actually holds um, the world's best record for uh, best tasting and, and uh, crisp Coke that you can have. Um, but I kid you not. Coke's here in Japan. Oh, it's different. It's way different. Like I, I can't make it up. Like when I, when you open it, it has like that little, what's the sound? That it's, it's, a, it's, it's <laughs> perfect. Oh, like gosh. he, when he told me, that, I was like, yeah, whatever. It's a coke. And then I actually tried it for myself. I'm like, no, it's definitely the best tasting coke here in Japan that I've ever tasted. So that's, that's my guilty pleasure is drinking cokes almost every day. Definitely. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, singing out loud in the car. You do this every yep, day. I am 100% guilty. Not only that. does he sing out loud, he dances. He <laughs> has like, he is his own band with any song that comes on. That's true. Um, I mean, it's kind of obvious though. I mean, I, I really enjoy music. It's what I do. Um, whether or not I, I ever go anywhere with music or ever make anything of it, I will always do something with music because it's just, it's my little ray of sunlight, so to say. So singing, you know, dancing around, making music, I just enjoy it all. So I definitely would be in the car. And it's not even just the smooth R&B or, or soul music. Like it's, she'll tell you my, my music can go from- It's <laughs> random. It's, it will go from like R&B to rap, to country, to pop, to like K-pop. Like it's just like, Anything that comes out is completely random. It's random. And I mean, I just enjoy all types of music. So it's just, it's no surprise there. Like, yeah, I'll be, um, I can't for the likes of me which song it is, but it's, uh, it's one of the, uh, who is it by? Well, for lack, lack of remembering, uh, it's just this part there where you're basically just screaming at the, the top of your lungs. But I want to say it's, uh, Let's Start a Riot. Uh, they have a part that just break down. <laughs> I call myself at the light one day. I was singing at Park and I was just screaming at the light. And I look over, and the person in the car is just kind of like, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, I always tell him, I said, one day someone's going to look over and they're going to record you. Because he literally <laughs> sings, dances, like, very animated when the song comes on. It's definitely true. I'll record him one day. <laughs> okay, next on the list is binging a whole TV show in one day. Um, I didn't know that was a guilty pleasure. I thought that was normality. No, we're kidding. Uh, we binged a few TV shows. Like, we binged Lost. We definitely. Uh, we did. Um, well, but we didn't. I mean, I, mean, I guess it's kind of unfair to the, the actual guilty pleasure itself. We didn't necessarily binge the whole show. Well, not the whole show, but we watched several episodes um, we, in one day. Not necessarily a TV show, but we did re-binge um, all of Marvel's cinematic universe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, and we actually started not necessarily in the cinematic timeline, but the actual timeline based upon uh, the events that should have happened in the movie. So the chronological order. Uh, I think we started with, was it Incredible Hulk? Or was it Captain America? No, no, it was actually Captain, Captain America. America. So we actually tried to follow the timeline. Um, there was Captain America? Yes, because he was actually the first Avenger. 
Oh, his was I don't Saturday remember a starting with her. Oh, Captain America, not Marvel. Not Marvel. I think we actually skipped Captain Marvel. Um, probably because it was still in the theaters uh, around the time that Marvel's Endgame was coming out. So, you know, I, I just wanted to get back here on and make sure I did the same thing and see what predictions I We watched the whole entire thing. We also just recently watched uh, Raising Dion on Netflix. Did we binge watch it? We did. Oh, okay. We finished it all on a Thursday, I think. Um, if you haven't seen that, it's really good. It's actually really good. Um, it follows this little boy who ends up with different type of abilities from his father. Um, I don't want to spoil the plot. But just you know what? I, well, we'll talk about that in another, a different podcast. I'll tell you. Remind me to tell you afterwards. Wait. We binge watch uh, Game of Thrones. We did actually. I still say we binge watch Laws. Okay. okay. Um. What else have you been to watch? Well, I had you been binge watching Flash. I did watch it. Um, I have been watched all of um, The Last Man on Earth. I didn't actually think I was going to like the show. I watched like an episode um, probably two years after it first aired. So glad I had the season for a while. And it wasn't until I was stuck on it underway and I started watching it. I was like, you know what? I actually really like this. Um, just because it was different and I just kind of liked their corny jokes. Um, I didn't. I mean, the show's okay. It's not. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, I mean, we mostly binge watch everything um, if we can. I have to actually binge watch all of Power to catch up. Um, you did binge watch Power. I did. And. Now that I'm all caught up, it's not, it's not as bad. Okay. Do you people watch? Um, not as much as I used to. I used to people watch. It's kind of interesting watching different people go through their days and just kind of trying to put yourself in their shoes. I wonder, you know, what they're doing or why they're making these type of decisions and what led them to it, but not as much anymore. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think I've ever been a people watcher per se. Yeah, I don't think I have. But it is it's it's something unique to watch someone else uh, go through their day to day of their lives and just see how they interact and the decisions they make and wonder why they did it that way. Yeah, not as much. Okay. Watching Disney films and cartoon as an adult. Hmm. Um. Not really, no. There's, I don't really like a lot of Disney films. So you don't watch any Disney films? I didn't say that. I just said I don't really enjoy a lot of Disney films. A lot of, a lot of films I enjoy actually came from different studios. Um, now, I mean, I, most most animated series that I enjoy from my childhood that I actually rewatch is um, like Lion King, The Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, just to name the, the top two off the top of my head, and then Aladdin. Uh, everything else out there just kind of if I'll watch it if someone else is watching it and I'm in the room. Um, but for the most part, I'm not really, not really. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's any Disney films that I rewatch. I rewatch Pocahontas because it's on Hulu, mm-hmm. but I haven't watched any films or cartoons. I say, ask me in about a year and a half. Once, Ava gets once Ava's a lot bigger. <laughs> and then I'll have a long list for you. Um, well, I mean, I guess I did watch... Uh, that's, <laughs> that was kind of a guilty pleasure for a while. I did watch Frozen. I was on the hashtag Frozen team for a while. Are you serious? I was, actually. Um, I just thought it was it was unique at the time. I mean, it didn't do anything different than you expect from any other animated series um, or cartoon, I should say. Okay, so what Disney films have you watched? Uh, you'd actually probably have to put up a list because I don't really follow the, what they make. I can say the most recent Disney films that I watch is everything related to Marvel because they just purchased them, as you can see. Oh Obviously, God. a big superhero nerd, uh, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Disney kind of has this thing where they do a lot of um, not allowing for movies to have the rating for you to get the type of movie you deserve from it. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm super surprised because I was reading an article uh, that popped up on my Google News recently that says that they're going to allow 
um, or Deadpool to have a ready R rating. And I'm anxious to see what type of restrictions they still manage to put on that. But maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. So, um, let's see here. Eating food in bed. And I said this one because I already know what you're going to say, but do you eat food in bed? Not anymore, actually, no. And I know that's probably shocking that I said not anymore and not just no. Um, I actually used to eat, not necessarily in bed, um, but in my room when I was growing up a lot, um, mostly just because, you know, we didn't really have a, a big kitchen area growing up. Um, I could have ate in the living room, which I did a lot of times. Um, but for the most part, I would always just, you know, take something and I, I always use a towel to set something down because when I grew up, right, uh, it was if you dropped something and you made a mess and you weren't able to clean it up type of mess, like it was just enough to where you stained some carpet or, you know, you got spilled some liquids or something like that. It was not a good day. Um, not only are you cleaning it, but <laughs> you're not going to have a, a pretty sore backside after you're done cleaning it. Um, so for me, I try not to eat in bed. Most of that stigma came from, from that same reason there. So actually, once I moved out, um, I just always started utilizing my living room area. I might move to a place in Midtown, uh, Little Rock, right there behind Park Plaza Mall. It was called Summit House. I don't know what it's called now. You know what it's called? Same thing, Midtown. Uh, it's called Midtown now. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so we, I had a uh, two bedroom apartment there. I shared with a uh, best friend at the time, Jordan. Uh, obviously, did a lot of music and things there. But when I always eat, I would usually always eat in the living room, unless I was doing work in the studio, which I would eat at my desk there, uh, just to kind of keep the ball rolling with some things. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm I'm not an in bed eater mostly. <laughs> a lot of that comes from this. I remember. And I, my dad used to tell me, stop eating in your bed, right? I used to always try to sneak some type of snacks. Um, and I listened, right? Obviously, after, you know, you get told a couple of times and you get a little bit of punishment after the fact, right? You start to pay attention because you don't want that anymore. Um, so I had one of my, uh, my old friends I grew up with uh, invite him over. He spent the night if we were playing games all night. Um, his mom had brung us something. I don't remember and for whatever reason, we just decided to eat in the room. But that particular time, I didn't get him anything to like sit his bag down on. Uh, so I think his, his bag of food or whatever, just kind of sitting on the bed and just eating over the bag. Um, now, if you know anything about ants and things like that, not only are they attracted to small crumbs that we drop, right? They can also kind of smell the food that lingers on different things that you set your bag down on. So uh, me not knowing any better or me not following up with that. He set his bag down. Uh, didn't do anything about that night. Didn't try to clean up after the fact. Went to sleep. Woke up the next day and pulled the sheets off because my legs are itching. I didn't notice they've been itching like a couple hours before I woke up. I didn't pay attention to it. And there are ants everywhere. All down my legs. And I've just been eating up. My legs were bleeding. Um, it was actually just a bad time. And ever since that day, that stigma of eating in bed is just it's a no-go for me. I just want to do it. Yeah, I think I mentioned it to you one time about let's eat breakfast or something in bed. He was like, no, you don't eat breakfast in bed. I don't do that. And it was like this whole tangent of why he does not eat in bed. I mean, I, I get the sentiment. I mean, I wasn't trying to to downplay it. I mean, obviously, now that I'm an adult, um, I could probably eat in bed and just wash sheets if I wasted something. Um, and I don't think it's that big of an ant problem over here where we are. Um, but step, definitely back stateside where, you know, you could eat something today and you could be in the living room or in the kitchen. And then tomorrow we have little creepy crawlers running around, depending on how good you clean up. Um, and I, I kind of made me OCD growing up dealing with that type of, you know, stigma. We, we had a house and my dad did a lot of plants, a lot of gardening. So we, we always had a lot of crawlers around, but you'd always spray. But every now and again, especially summer or after the rains, you know, bugs don't want to be outside and get flushed out or rained on. They want to make their way in. So we're back. Um, camera cut out right there. But what I was saying was that usually after it rains, the bugs outside make their way in. And you don't want those in bed with you because ultimately they end up with a bad time. So, no, I try not to eat in bed anymore. Yeah, we were never allowed to eat in bed. Well, first, we were never allowed to eat in our room. So 
There's no way you're going to eat in your bed anyways. So we'll do one last one, which is um, proving your partner wrong about something. And I say that he tries to prove me wrong about so, everything. I would say it's definitely have been the way. Um, <laughs> a lot of times I, uh, I just have a lot of useless facts um, that I know about different things. And so I used to do it a lot. But now the stigma is a little more 60-40. Sometimes it's me with the 60 and sometimes it's her with the 40. But like... She'll find out something, and sometimes she'll hold on to it for a couple of days. She'll, like, tell you that she wouldn't. I don't do that. But she will. Like, I'll do something, and she'll she'll urge me, you know, to do it whatever way she says, or, hey, it's, actually, you should do it this way, Rico. It's a better idea you do it like this. Um, you know, me being me, stuck in my ways, I just do it anyway. And then later on, come back, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you were right. So I told you. I told you. She'll just listen to the first I do time. do a lot of I told you so. I know that's bad. I'm like, I told you, I told you, but... I mean, it kind of is what it is. But and I try not to do it that much now. You know, trying to be open-minded even more than what I am now. It just helps build a better relationship anyways. Well, do you have any guilty pleasures outside of this list that you do? Um, that we haven't discussed? So, besides music, um, I would probably say... Uh, playing PS4. I do like to uh, game. I uh, play a lot of Call of Duty. Uh, and it's not so much to where it's like that's just what I indulge in a whole bunch of. It's just that when I, whenever I feel like making music or I, you know, it's just not there because you don't want to force it. Um, but I still need something to kind of take the load off and you know, kind of smooth over the edge. Um, I hop online and I'll game a little bit. It just kind of helps me out through the day to day. Uh, what about you? I don't think I have anything besides Coke. That's like my number one guilty pleasure. Hmm. And we have one here? We do not have a Coke here. What are you talking about? I think we do. <laughs> so, we really want for you to hear the sound yeah. when you open up the Coke. Maybe she'll review it later. Let her know down in the comments. I should have did it. What if it like sizzles or whatever? You yeah, yeah. Man, when you I get this you, every time you open up any Coke in Japan. I tell you, it's very crisp. It's really good. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, guys. It was Ava's waking up and she she a little loud over there in the corner. <laughs> Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching and for tuning in. And if you guys can, let us know some of your guilty pleasures down in the comment section. And uh, you guys can catch me over at my channel. It is TY1TLM, which is Taiwan, the Miracle Monster. Uh, subscribe if you guys like the music or like some of the comedy skits that I do. And then please do like, comment, and subscribe on her channel. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.